Hello. That's kind of working. Is that working? I don't know. Audio good. So you can hear my voice. Hey. Yeah, seriously, like I don't understand what happens. It just, it'll go, it'll come on, it'll come off, it'll go on. Well, you know, there's lots to miss about me, <laughs> especially my voice, I guess. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I don't know what happens. OBS kind of like, and then yesterday's stream, it just went, okay, I'm just going to turn off your mic for no reason. My mic was like fully on. My sound card was like accepting it. I could see all the outputs, but OBS just decided, nah, I'm not going to play that now, are we? Uh, yeah, anyway, what I was going to do is I'm calling these ones because I've been doing all the simple ones. Uh, I figured I'd go like a little bit, uh, it's a little bit more advanced, I guess. It's like the journey to Functor, uh, sorry, to Monad Transformers. Okay. And then what I'm using is this. I'll post it in here. There we go. Uh, and it's it's pretty cool, actually. It's Monday Morning Haskell. If you're not seeing them, they've got quite a lot of good little bits and pieces. Uh, oh. I should probably put my hand in front of the camera. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I was just going to go through this and like just, you know, see how far we get, basically. Um, it shouldn't be too bad. It kind of, I think it works like it goes functors, functor applicative, monads. Uh, I can't remember what the order is, but yeah. It's not Monday morning anymore. I know. Well, no. Well, yeah. It might be. It might be if you're in America. It's Monday morning there. Hey, didn't think of that one, did you? Hmm. Hold on, are they behind? Is it Monday morning? I don't know. Sorry. Are they ahead or behind? <laughs> I should know. I've worked like... Surely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The behind, 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 behind. <laughs> That's terrible. Right. So the idea being... Uh, let me close some of these guys. Oh my god, that was repeating myself. That was horrible. <sighs> right, 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 right. Next thing I also need to do is close this stuff. Get loads of... Literally, it's just last minute. I was just like... Bleh. I should set up a schedule and do these things properly, but... Whatever. On the fly, you know. Uh, I was going to go on here. And I've kind of got... Uh, I've got this already. But what I might do... Since we've got it open, I might just create a new chapter. Uh, yeah, that'd be well. It's not even a chapter. I'm just going to create a new file, uh, and we'll go. We'll call it Journey to Monad Transforms or something. Yeah, create file, and we'll call it Journey. If I can spell it. Dot hs. Oh, hold on. The font's probably dead small, isn't it? Let me boom, boom it up. To remember these things. Is that better? I think it should be better. Uh, yeah, that's that. Uh, maybe, what have I done with my microphone? I've just realised. Look, I've got a, I've got a cover on the microphone. <laughs> How good's that? You can hear me even better now. That was called muffle sound. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a pro streamer, honestly. Whew, I don't know why I've got I've not got millions of followers and stuff and you know, making a living from this. Uh what, what was I doing? Yeah, uh, hold on. Let me yeah, that's cool that one. Let's go on to this one. Let's adjust uh let's call this something. So we'll create a module and we'll just call it uh did I just call it journey? Yeah, I'll just call it journey. Uh yeah, that'd be cool. Uh Mm, 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 yeah. Where? Cool. I'm probably going to have to do some imports of this one, I should imagine. Uh, but let's add it anyway. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Here it is. Bow, bow, bow. And we're going to go journey. That'll do. Oh, it's a cat. Meow. What are you doing? She'll start meowing. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, I should have seen the... Yeah, I know. <laughs> pro gamer. It sounds better. Oh, yeah, pro gamer move. Yeah. 
I do this because um, I get bored. Well, I'm currently, I'm, I've been looking for work, so I'm kind of like not doing a great deal. There we go. It starts meowing. That's what we want. Meow. Meow. Hold on. Because if I don't see to this. Uh, right, this is what happens. My cat, for some reason, doesn't drink water out of a water like pot or whatever. She likes to drink out of the shower. You know, makes sense. Yeah, and obviously, because I'm an idiot, I abide her to doing this and I egg her on by going, yeah, of course, I'll open a door for you anytime you need to drink water. Um, idiot. It's all my fault. I've blatantly taught her this. Uh, well, say me. I blame my wife. It wasn't me. I'll be right back. There we go. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Yep. Cat, unfortunately, doesn't have uh, um, the knowledge of streaming. Doesn't understand that, does it? So I'm going to wait for no one. Uh, okay, so I've done this. Let me pop this up a little bit. Because I can't type when I've got it like this. Uh, so I was going to do reload that. Let's see what happens. I recommend, if, no, if you haven't um, installed the Hag Haskell language server, yeah, give it a go. It's, it's really useful. It's like, uh, I mean, it's getting as good as like the pure script uh, language server. To be honest, it's it, you're you're starting to be able to be able to do some cool stuff. So that's really cool. Um, but yeah, but I've been losing using it loads. All you've got to remember is I use Nix, and it, you have to build a version of it with the current version of GHC that you're using. Uh, otherwise. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not like, it doesn't stand alone and then it'll work against any version. It has to be against. So when you use Nix, that's kind of like handy. Uh, yeah. Right. So, 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 I'm trying to think what there's, let's go, just, let's just start this. Oh, I probably need to zoom this in too. No, don't click that one. Oh, I just clicked it, didn't I? Uh, I'm going to zoom in. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Is that readable? Let me have a little look. Is that readable? That's kind of readable, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. So welcome to part two. Well, already we're in the wrong part. Where's part one then? Part one. <laughs> it's a good start. Functors. Right. Uh, welcome to our series of monads. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, concepts. Yep. In the first part of the series, we'll be start learning about functors. Cool. I'm going to skip this stuff because I think they kind of go over it, but it's, it's nice to start from here. So here's a simple example to start us on our way. This code converts an input string like John Doe 24 into a tuple. We want to consider all inputs though, so resulting types is a maybe. Okay, uh, how should I do this? Should I just, I guess we can give it some of this, can't we? Boop, boop, boop. I'll give a bit more room. I can do it like that, I guess. That kind of works, doesn't it? Yeah, we see both. I think that's all right. Uh, right. What's the IDE? Uh, hey, Pat Ferragi. Uh, it's, I use Doom. Doom. Doom, which is an Emacs thing. Uh, basically, it started off as a, here we go. It started off as just, a, what would you call it? Like a template, but then it went into uh, its own thing. So it's basically like Space Max, uh, but its own version of it. It's pretty nice. I've just popped it into the chat if you want to check it out. <laughs> it's like Vim, but more horny. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I've not quite got that intimate with my uh, <laughs> with my Doom, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Uh, cool. So yeah, so... Uh, oh. You can, if because I was just talking about Haskell Language Server, if you use, what's it called? <gasps> I forgot the name of the IDE. Uh, VS Code. VS Code. You can, like, uh, install the Haskell Language Server in VS Code. Like, dead easy. It's just a plugin, uh, And you don't have to mess around. Because my setup, like, it works nice, but it, it took quite an eventful event of lots of pain to get to where it is. Uh, purely because I also use Nix 
and I'm on uh, Mac OS. So, oh, oh, yeah. Nix is like super cool, but it's super annoying. <laughs> you can tell I don't work for their HR, can't you? Yeah, I like it, but at the same time, it's a pain in the ass. Um, hopefully, I'll get, I mean, yeah, it's better than Docker, so. <laughs> Right, what am I doing? Tuple uh, from input string. That's a nice short name. And that'll take a string uh, and it'll return us a uh, Macy. <laughs> Maybe string and what else? Uh, oh, it's a, a triple tuple. Triple tuple. Okay, that's going to return us that. Come on, work. So I don't have to type it again. Yes, thank you. It's pretty good, isn't it? Uh, you don't see that normally in Haskell uh, editing. Uh, so it's going to take us an input. Okay, and I've got to do do. So if uh, the length of oh string components, I guess that's uh, where is it going here? String components. Then nothing. So string components, I guess it's a function. It's gotta be a um, let's have a look. Uh, components compo I'm assuming it's gonna be a function. Is not equal to three. Uh, let's put it in a new line actually. Oh I'm gonna I've been um actually I'll show you in a minute. Then uh, okay, let's just do it like this for now. Uh, hello. <laughs> okay, let's see if it complains. Why aren't you complaining? Because, I mean, look at that. That's Oh, it is from somewhere. Uh, what? Any to any. Hold on, I've got to look this up then. What? I'm pretty confused. Uh, whoops. There we go, come on. Say you're wrong. There we go. Not in scope. That's better. Uh, where's it from? I guess it'd be data.string would be my guess. You'd think so, wouldn't you? What? Am I not... Oh, let's have a look further down. Is it saying that... Where's it got it from? Is this just making it up? So you basically... Oh, it's down here. Derp. Okay. It's in a where clause. Note to self, read further down. Uh, rather than assuming it's just a function. So, yeah, so obviously this uh, return and maybe is the idea. Actually, let's just do the where first. Uh, yeah. Where. Find it. Find it. Find it. All right. So, oh, okay. Oh, it's just words. Input. And then the age uh, is going to equal uh, read. And then uh, I could have probably just copied all this, couldn't I? It might have been wicker. Get the second value and make the read an int. So it knows what the read is. Yeah, yeah, go away. Okay. Let's save that. Cool. What's, hap what's happened here? Expect to the type string. String components, string components. Oh, look at what I've... Uh, hello. And look how I spelt this. I mean... Chat, you're not being very helpful here. <laughs> I take this as pair programming. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's not just me here. <laughs> uh, what am I going to do here? Uh, just string components. Oh, look at this. Oh, my goodness. Uh, what is it going to be one and an age okay that makes sense age uh, does age not take oh no it's not even going to take values okay that works right so the idea here being um, yeah it's kind of a bit ugly isn't it well I guess uh, I'll just show you know I guess we know what words is uh, so if you look word just breaks a list of string uh, into individual words so it will look for spaces so if you look on the example there 
uh, it broke after there and it broke again there because that represents a new line yeah so we understand that we'll go away uh, and then so yeah so that will split it up into yeah this is pretty inefficient if you look at it because then it does that and it gets the first value of that array and then here it gets sorry yeah value zero and then it gets value one so uh, when we split up John Doe 24 like that let's actually run it uh, let's do that cabal changed yeah okay I'm just gonna open a REPL when it opens when it opens edda Ed, what 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 what's wrong with you pass error module header import declared uh, what's wrong with you why are you doing this uh, chapter 2 chapter 2 is there chapter 2 there it is what's wrong with it what's wrong with you uh, let's restart this and see why it's not happy <laughs> restart my fire I, it's not that's probably not the word is it uh, okay well it seems to be happy so uh, let's that's the other thing though that's not too good why my setup is cool but not cool I keep I, I find that the see look now it's happy it's like yeah there's nothing wrong with any of this <laughs> oh no it wasn't there that was wrong uh, okay 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 uh, let's get rid of that uh, let's do is redundant remove it no I don't want to remove it uh, reload okay cool thanks Oh my god, it's absolutely pissing it down out there. Which in English means it's raining. Uh, where were we? There we go. This one. There we go. We're here. Except it's opened it in an entirely new window. Okay. Uh, okay, well, we'll go to Journey. That's what we want. Here we go. Right. Come on. Come on. We need you there. Have patience. <laughs> So, oh, I've probably got to import it, haven't I? Boop, 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 boop. So now I'm going to import, uh, I just called it journey. You're going to find it? There we go. Cool. So if we go to pull, there we go. And then the input was from John, John Doe there. There we go. Cool. Lexical error, character J. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Why has it done that? Uh, is this, is this, is there a reason for this? Uh, why, 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 why? Hold on, why are we returning? So we're returning a tuple. I mean, it can't be anything to do with capital letters. Oh, 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 oh I know. Because look, it's taken, um, you see that? Yeah, okay, that's fine. Uh, what on it? What? I just need to do it again. I think it. I'd copied it from the site and it's not using the right. Um, Break it. Yeah. There we go. Cool. So you can see I split it. So it's done John Doe 24. So if we quickly look, uh, it's saying, is the length of this equal to three? Uh, so it's it's looking once you split it. So this is what this does. It splits it into an array. So when we just do, we can just do this. Look. Word. Uh, there. What have I done? That's words. Well done. Ah! Oh, bless you! That's my wife sneezing. Cool, so that's what it does. It'll split it, and then it's saying, is that equal to three? Uh, if it, is it not equal to three? And if it's not, it's like, I don't care. I only want to deal with inputs of string that are, of, sorry, with strings that have three words in them. Uh, if it is, then do that again. <laughs> and then again, as again, grab the, zero value which would be John uh, grab and this is returning our tuple so if you look that's like a little tuple and then here grab our second of one a second value and and with the third do age and then to do age is what we're doing is we're grabbing hello we're grabbing the last value uh, in this uh, it just happens to be an integer <laughs> and then it's saying that we're reading it and we're going to convert because read you have to give it a type a definition to tell what read it's going to use and then that will convert it um, into an int so look you can see the example there read one two three to int and then that return one two three yeah so you have to give it like a because if you were to do without this um, 
if you hold on a second i'll just turn that off it's cool to have that but sometimes it's annoying is it just going to work it's just going to imply it sometimes it doesn't imply it well this time it did it worked never mind yeah sometimes if you don't uh, give it the type it gets really annoyed with you and it says no i don't know which read you want you're talking about but this way right anyway let's keep going uh, this simple function, yeah, it takes a string, converts into param parameters, last name, blah, blah, blah. We might write a uh, conversion function between these two. Uh, hold on, I didn't read that bit. Suppose we have another part of the program using a data type to represent a person instead of a tuple. That's a much better idea. Uh, we might write a conversion function between these two different types. We want to account for the possibility of failure. So we have another function handling that case. Cool, so let's make a data type. Uh, so we've got a data of person, and they're a person. Okay, do uh, my keyboard. I need to get down with these. First uh, name. That's going to be a string. Oh, hello. What are you grabbing? Need some paper. Need some paper. Oh my goodness. I yeah. <laughs> you don't need to. Sorry, it's, it's my wife. She needs some paper. She, she's camera shy. You got some? Yeah. Is that good? No, oh, well done. You don't have to crawl on the floor, you know. <laughs> she likes crawling. She likes crawling on the floor. It's good times, eh? <laughs> uh, where was I? Yes, yeah, string. Cool. So first value. Oh, if any of this, if because I guess all my other streams have been a little bit more in depth. So if any of this stuff uh, is like a little bit too much, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, just ask a question. Just, just go in chat and ask. I'll answer absolutely anything. Don't worry, because I guess, yeah, if you're coming from uh, what I've been doing previously, we're kind of like jumping quite a few subjects here. But I kind of plan to, because it's cool to do like the um, big and the friendly stuff. Um, but I also kind of want to do some stuff it's a little bit more advanced uh, sometimes. Don't do that one. Do that one. Yeah. Okay. There we go. We've got a little data type. So our data type's person. Uh, its constructors are first name, last name, H. Yep. String, string, in. Cool. We got that. So now we can convert a person from tuple. So being the idea, we're going to convert this tuple into this type. Uh, data type. Sorry. So, uh, person from, oh, I keep <laughs> putting the space, <laughs> tuple, uh, that's a string, was it two strings, yeah, string and an int, hello, and then you'd think it just returned person, maybe, oh, I want some maybe person, okay, that's fair enough, because you might have values missing, uh, cool, find it for me, oh, no, you're not going to find it, find it for me? I mean, I could have just typed it out by the time I waited there. So, uh, uh, oh, okay, yeah. So it's basically because what we're passing it up here, if you see, it's returning a maybe. Um, so we want to, you know, that should be maybe. Maybe I should read the types. Yeah, that makes more sense, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, so we're checking. Just see what I, I know. I think I know what happens. Yeah, so we're going to chain these basically, but let's have a look. So that's nothing. Uh, and that obviously, if the result of the function above tuple from input strings is a nothing, then we want to pass that along to a nothing. Um, and then we'll do person uh, from whoops, tuple. And if it's just, let's put that in brackets, uh, just t. Okay, so we know. That equals just. I've, look at me. I'm like going. I'm reading a different part. I'm down here. Well, okay, yeah, well. I was like, what? Why is it just doing just T? Shouldn't it be more? Yeah, it should be. Uh, hold on, though. Shouldn't that be a just? What have I done here? What have I done? What am I doing? Oh no! Look, I I'm reading. <laughs> I'm combining two functions into one. Okay, 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 okay. So yeah, yeah. I'm skipping way ahead. 
Uh, I'm like doing the function below above. Well, there we go. So f name l name and then age, I guess. Yeah. And then that would be so to set up a, a you know to populate a data type, uh, you just literally it, they act like functions. Oh, that's another thing I should explain. That's a pretty cool thing. Because when you look at, I, I didn't really, well, I guess I didn't, well, I knew, but I didn't like fully realize that, um, yeah, data types and things like that become, they're, they're essentially, it's not s so apparent, but once you get into like type level programming, all this stuff is essentially like another set of functions. So you can sort of think of, think of person takes three inputs, which are these three. Mm. which is quite cool which then makes more sense when you um, uh, use it in type level programming which I assure you is not going to happen today cool uh, right so that's that one so we'll do convert so now we, we're going to combine the two aren't we which is basically what I should have been doing first. Oh, it's a bit annoying having to just type these out, but ah, uh, what was it? Int. <laughs> and then that should return us a maybe uh, yeah, person. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, convert tuple, and if we have a nothing, then we want to return a nothing. Let's go down a bit, and then find it, yeah. And if we have a just, uh, just uh, t, then we're going to return just person from tuple. Uh, yeah. T. T. Okay. Does that make sense? So it's basically saying um, once we've got some form of conversion, uh, which... So this might this will be a maybe or something. Uh, then we want to we're going to convert it into a tuple, but again it might be a maybe because the first value we pass in might be a nothing, uh, which basically is taking it from here. So it's saying if we pass that into here, that can be a nothing or a set of values. Um, yeah, and then if that's a set of values, which should be a t so that'd be like a just and this would be the t and then it'd be passed into this one and because at that point we know that t is definitely there so it'd pass into here and then we convert it into a person so we're kind of like jumping around yes yeah, so we, we, we're using this one to jump through this one because this one can't be passed uh you know unless we know we've got a, a, a just i mean technically we could inline that in here but you know this is not basis of this uh, right uh, have I got convert tuple yeah we've done that one a change of format but imagine our original program changes to read the whole list of names so yeah a list from input strings uh, and it takes a string and it returns us a list so we can imagine that uh, and then it do a map maybe let's quickly in case you haven't seen what map maybe oh let's just pop it in here i can quickly explain uh, what it is will it explain not if i don't spell it right whoa look at that did that wrong press the wrong key there okay import oh, okay it's from date maybe import it then cool that's going to complain that it's rubbish uh, we're going to bring up the code. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's a bit hefty, isn't it? Cool. So map maybe um, a take a function of an A and returns a maybe B. So, uh, yes. And then maybe Bs. So what happens is it takes a list of A's, um, takes them in and returns them as a list. Uh, it takes a function. So it's like a map, but it's mapping with maybe. So map would be like, that would be A to B, the first bit, and then return as Bs. But what we're doing is we're sticking a maybe uh, in there. So the function that, whatever the equality checks or, you know, sorry, whatever the function does, it, you've got to make sure it returns you some maybe of B. 
And that's your bead. Cool, so that's what that does. So I guess we're not going to write that bit out, but... Uh, yeah. And now I've got to turn off my docks. Because as useful as they are, they get in the way also. Cool, so this is demonstrating, well, what if, you know, our first function... Um, you know, what, what, what if we want to expand it and start using a list? Um, you know, how are we going to then do it? Uh, so what's the answer? Tuples, input string. Hold on. Oh, so you change everything. Okay, so that goes into lines. Uh, okay. Hold on, let me explain it. So list from input, map maybe. Uh, contents, map maybe. And then it's not really explaining, is it? Tuple from input string. I think it's just expanding everything to handle... Uh, a list yeah 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 yeah. okay so if uh, now if we pass this up to the code using person we would have to change a type of convert tuple function um, it would have a parallel structure though maybe and list can both act as containers for other values sometimes we don't care how values are wrapped we just want to transform whatever underlies value exists and then return the value in the same wrapper so I think they're going to explain what they mean by that Oh, oh, sorry, itchy nose. Um, okay, so with this idea in mind, we can start understanding functors. First and foremost, functor is a type class in Haskell. In order for the data type to be an instance of functor um, type class, it must implement a single function fmap. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, I can't, well, I can't really reproduce that. Uh, so I guess... Uh, let me know if you don't have an understanding of what an instance is. I'm happy to explain. Um, but yes, it's, it's essentially saying that we've, we're making an instance of list for uh, functor. Functor of list. I can't remember which way around it is. But yeah, we're essentially say, saying if we use functor with list, um, this is what we expect. This is how we expect it to behave. So whenever we see fmap, so fmap or... But something you might be more aware of is that that's like fmap um, so whenever we use that with uh, so we'll have like a function you know that does a whoops to b and then we've got a list okay of a's um, yeah I'm just pseudoing the hell out of it <laughs> so that's basically so we so that is a behavior Okay, so which is showing, showing there. And then when we do a constraint, sorry, uh, an instance, uh, this is what it actually does. So it's actually just using the map. Okay, so whenever we use a functor along with that, uh, you have to declare it. And the only thing that f to declare an instance of functor, it needs an F map. Yep. Uh, so the second parameter in some containers is a first type. The output then is a container of the second type. And what are they saying here? <laughs> the second parameter is some container of the first type. The output then is contained a container of the second type. Now let's look at a different functor instance for some familiar. Oh, okay. So it's using, it's going on about the F. So it's essentially saying that this F, which in our case is a list because a list is a functor. So this could be, uh, you know, think of it like things that are functors. So a, a list, uh, maybes either's that we can have a little look uh, there we go have a little look at functor class functor oh is it even going to be in here uh, yeah it will be there we go so these are all different types of functors so that's pretty handy isn't it so we've got maybes io blah 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 identity did i say either was i totally wrong Where are you? Yeah, it should be date either. Oh, where have I gone? Because it should. Oh, I don't know where I've gone now. Okay, well, gotten lost. But yeah. Uh, in fact, fmap is a generalization of mapping. So let's have a little quick look at map. Map, map, map. There it is. Oh, where's map? 
There it is. So you can see if you compare this map. Okay, so this is map. I'll pop it in here actually. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Map. And then we're going to do F map. And you'll notice a difference. Okay. So if I align it a little bit better. Uh, so you can see this is RF. There it is. The the list is literally the F. Uh, so when you look at the instance, it's saying, well, when you want to sort of map over list or F map over lists uh, as a functor, well, basically you can just use map because that's exactly the same. The F is a list. Yes, yeah, so it's just saying I'm I've got my value of A wrapped in something of F, which is a functor, and I'm gonna use it and I'm gonna go F of and return f of b so i'm going to rewrap it in what i was originally wrapped in so they have to be the same so if it, if you pass in a, a list it's going to rewrap it in a list if you pass it maybe it's going to rewrap it in maybe's etc so fmap is a generalization of mapping for example the map data type is also a functor it uses its own function for fmap Functors simply take this idea of transforming all underlying values and apply it to other types. With this in mind, let's observe how maybe is a functor. There we go. So how does maybe work as a functor? So if you've got fmap and you pass it this function that it expects, which is a to b, uh, if the second value is nothing, then just return nothing because you know I can't you can't do anything with that with that function there's nothing to do with it so you're just going to return as nothing uh, if you f map f and then you've got the value of just a then what you can do is you're doing this unwrapping and rewrapping so you're um, you know that the outside bit this f here yeah which is a functor uh, let me just so I don't keep jumping one to the other you can just see it yeah, you know that the, I know this is called f as a function, but let's imagine that that's called something else. You know what, I'm going to grab it and I'm going to call it something else. Let's look on the left only. <laughs> uh, we'll call it fun. There we go. And then we'll call that, this one fun. Yeah, okay. So it's just saying if we have uh, an instance of functor, or maybe um, first one nothing and then now we've got our function which in our case is a to b okay and it's a just a so our functor the f is is of maybe which just and nothing are its constructors of maybe yeah so you've got maybe and you, you've got the nothing and you've got the just so inside of that you've got our a okay but then we want to return the same f so here we go, we're returning the same f to just. And then we're going to grab this fun, which is our a to b, and then pass it the a. And then that's how we get our fb. Okay, so the f is the just, which is passed here. So that's inside of that bit. And then we need to somehow get an f of b. Well, how do we get the b? The only way to get a b is to pass this function which expects an a so literally there's our a and we pass it to that and it's saying to us well i'll return you a b so to get it we grab the value of the f we go okay that's the f and then we're going to return it you know an f of b another way we can uh, 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 could do like this quickly um oops i mean i don't want to dwell on it too much uh <laughs> or, uh, oh, wrong one, wrong one. Uh, whoops. Should have done like this. Cool, 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 cool. This should complain, though. Why aren't you complaining? Well, yeah, it should do. Let's make it complain. Because I'll show an example of using type holes. Yeah, there we go. Now it's complaining. Yeah, it's clearly not going to get that. Okay, that returns this. 
This is our just. Okay. Let's start from the beginning, actually, like this. Uh, oh, yeah, I haven't changed the name for it. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so we've made our own maybe, right? And then what we're going to do here... Uh, going to restart this, and then it's going to tell us the errors. Well, it's going to give us a type hole, which is even better. Give me the type hole, or don't give me the type hole, whatever you fancy. Oh yeah, you're going to complain because I've written some random stuff up there. Here we go, type hole. Let's have a look at it. So our type hole, what it expects to return is a maybe B. That's how a functor works. So then it says, okay, well what we've got uh, available to us is an A which is a value A, so this A is just a value A. We've got a fun, which is an A to B. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, and we can use fmap again. So we probably don't want to use fmap again. So it's saying it re wants to return us a maybe. So we're going to have to have something of just, aren't we? Uh, and then now it's going to say uh, blah, expected a maybe of B, but uh, why is it giving it? Oh, hold on. Maybe it's not happy because of this. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> press the right keys, press the right keys. It should give us a, another uh, reasoning. Yeah, this is really cool when it works. When it works. Uh, the Haskell language server. I think it's just me having issues. Okay, well, we could just ignore that anyway. Let's have a look what it says. Uh, so it wanted a maybe... Yeah, that's fine. That's a good error, actually. It wanted a maybe of B... Uh, but we've given it of maybe of whatever. So we haven't specified. Um, and then we look at the functions that we've got available, uh, which are uh, fun, which is an A to B. And if you look lower, it'll say A, which is an A. So we know that fun takes an A. So you just simply go, oh, okay, well, I'll just pass fun an A. So fun returns us a B, and this wants to be a just uh, maybe of B. And I'll pray... Press Control A instead of uh, that, and then it won't work. That's why it won't work. I didn't put a tick. There we go. That'd be better errors now. Uh, yeah. So A to B, we've got A fun, and then A goes into A A to B. So this is when you can like use the compiler um, to help you with type holes. You see how I literally I just. I went like this. I went, okay, what's going on here? So I find a hole. I want this result to be a maybe B. Okay, okay. What have I got in scope? I've got an A, which is an A. I've got a fun, which is an A to B. And I've got F map. Okay, well, we know we want a maybe. So if our first result returns us nothing, it's more than likely to be adjust, isn't it? And that's going to be, except I've got to use the right R just. So we know that's going to be the first one. And then we leave a type hole there because obviously just takes a value, uh, you know, which is there. So that takes a value. And if we look at it, it found a hole to be B. And then we look again, our, our values in scope, A, and then fun, which takes an A and returns us a B. So how are we going to get a B? Well, we're obviously going to, I don't say obviously, but we're going to use this fun to eat up this A and return us a B. So we'll wrap it, fun. A. Boom. There we go. So that's a functor. And then you and then you have the similar basis, but that's what it's doing, you know. And you can see the wrapping. You see how this F and F is our functor. In our instance, the functor is the nothing and the just, or sorry, the maybe tick is our functor. And then our function is just a function from A to B. And then we're just unwrapping the A out of just and rewrapping it by running the function inside to get our B. Yeah, does that make sense? If it's a bit too, uh, I don't know, if it's a little bit too much, feel free to ask questions. Um, so I'm just kind of like explaining functors, I guess, like a, in the simple terms. Uh, and that's, there we go, look. And that just shows us what I just did, but I just did it so I could show you, because obviously if I was to do the actual maybe and nothing, then it, it'll break. 
So this looks a lot like our original convert tuple function. So let's have a look at convert tuple. Where is convert tuple? There it is. So if you look at it, if we look at it, uh, let's get rid of that. Convert tuple is a maybe of A and it returns us a maybe of B. Is that what it's saying? Yeah, that's kind of what it's saying, isn't it? Yeah, so it's it's like, yeah, so if you look, nothing, nothing, yeah. And then just, there's our just. Except it hasn't it hasn't got this fun there, it hasn't got the fun. But otherwise it's really close. Yeah, except our fun in this scenario is this function here. But I guess if it was passed in, then that would be a fun. I think that's where it's getting to. I think that's what's happening. <laughs> this is where it's aiming. Okay, so it looks a lot original. If we have no value in the first place, then the result is nothing. Yeah, that makes sense. So if we don't have a value, we return a nothing. If we do have a value, oh, excuse me, simply apply the function to a value and rewrap it in the just. Uh, the either date type can be seen as a maybe type with more information about how it failed. Okay, so it's showing us the functor for either. Uh, yeah, so it's just basically, uh, it's the same ability as a uh, as a, a maybe, but instead of just having a nothing with no information, it's returning us a left. What I always think of either's as is either left or right, and right is the right way. So <laughs> right is good, it's like, yeah, you're right. And then left is like, oh no, <laughs> you didn't do so good. Have an X. <laughs> so yeah, that's how I put it simply. <laughs> that's the little uh, <laughs> trivia I have in my head every time I think of, uh, of an either. Hold on, let me have another sip. Mm. Uh, where is this thing? It's gone a little bit loud, I think. This song here is a little bit louder than the others. It's Mozart, Piano Sonato number 11, uh, remixed by Vince, uh, using MIDI and a door. That's what it is, so you can't sue me, because uh, it's too old. It's too old, man. I can use that MIDI for free. Uh, anyway, <laughs> cool. So it's just showing us, uh, yeah, so the equivalent of F map for either. So it, if it's a left, it's much like a nothing, but it's a nothing with a value. So it doesn't care about the function, and that would return us a left of the X because we don't want it to do anything to that X. If you look at it, you know, we're just passing along the error. Um, and then F map of right with its value Y. Well, then we do exactly the same as the maybe, uh, which is on the left or up here. We're just applying this function we've passed along with Y and then wrapping it back up in the right. So you can see like a, a functor is basically, uh, it's giving you the ability to uh, manipulate with the information or, you know, the values inside of a functor, doing something to it and then wrapping it back up. So you don't lose that sort of context. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense, doesn't it? It's the same with just. So note the first type parameter of this instance is fixed. Only the sec second parameter of either value is changed by fmap. Yeah, so it's saying, um, I know that, because if, uh, should we look at where's either? No. Okay, well either, essentially, anything that's left on it, uh, it'll only it won't apply an f because it just looks at f at left sorry and instantly says well no i'm an i'm a left i'm going to give you that but i mean it's you know you've declared essentially you've, like much like i've done here you know i've just added a tick i've literally just copied what functor does so convert tuple then we can change convert tuple let's do it not with tv let's go convert um, tuple and we'll call it tick this time okay and we'll constrain it to functor and uh, oh you know what I should do it's getting dark now put a light on might be able to see me I guess I should check that yeah oh yeah, yeah. maybe you couldn't see me before 
can now. Okay. Uh, so we're constraining the F to be a functor in this scenario. So we can go string, string, uh, int, and then we're going to return an F of person, person. Uh, yeah, use that one. And then, so to reproduce what we're doing above, uh, we're going to use the F map that we made. Well, we haven't made it. Let's pretend it is. It, it would be a DF map that we made. Uh, if we oh, actually we'll be able to use it in a minute, yeah, that'd be fine. And then we're going to f map uh, <laughs> uh, person from tuple. So why person from tuple? Well, if you look, you can imagine that's an A, and that's our B. Okay, let's uh, move some stuff down a little bit. So I isolate this on its own. So we know that f map uh, it's an f of A. And it returns us an f of b. So there's our f of a, f of b. So if we look here, we're saying our f of a and our f of b. So we're f mapping, which expects an f of a, sorry, an a to b. So in our case, there's our function a to b, which is a to b. Let's just quickly. Uh, what should we call this? Uh, we'll call it um, F F two. <laughs> there we go. Because it's doing some, it's automatically doing some currying. But if you're wondering why that value is not, if I spell it correctly, not S two, F two. Yeah, that's what's happening there. Uh, so yeah, this is like you know, like we had before our list or. Because we've just constrained it to a functor, we're saying that anything that has a functor um, instance can use this function as long as it's a functor. Uh, as long as our, these specific values are wrapped in a functor. Okay, so you can't like, you know, you can't uh, make anything can be anything. Yeah, it's just as long as these values are wrapped in a functor, then we're going to return that same functor that it's wrapped in with a person. So it's replacing, it's doing exactly the same, you think about it. It just happens that there are functors a maybe. But then the example above is saying, well, what if we want it to be a list? Well, this now can work over a list or maybes or evers. Or see, the, the list goes on basically. So, well, you know, the list goes on of whatever has an instance of functor. So that's pretty damn handy. So we've now, you know, been able to use this function. And instead of it being just static to maybe, we're now saying, well, it's it's you know it's polymorphic, or it's you're able to use it with anything that has a functor, uh, and that's what it's doing. So that's how we built our F map, uh, which was down here, uh, an F map of the maybe functor. We created our own maybe. And that's done its its job basically. We're just going well. We're going to use that f map that we know, of, you know. And in this f map, it will use, you know, any instance of the f map depending on what f you pass it. And if it's a maybe, if it's a, a list, uh, you know, that's why it's constrained to functor. Yeah. So that's that bit. Making our own functors. Oh, we kind of. Okay. Maybe it's going to do. <laughs> I just did. Uh, we can also take our own data types and define an instance of a functor. There we go. Now we're going to do our own. Cool. Suppose we have the following data type representing a directory of local government officials. It is parameterized by the type A. So there's an A. Okay, so whatever that happens to be, that's what it will be using throughout of here. Um, this means we allow different directories using different representations of a person. Okay, so let's copy that and let's take down. We don't mind about the warnings anymore. Let's clean this up a little bit and then we'll pop that there. Okay, so we're saying when we do a gov directory and whatever A we happen to pass to it, 
it'll be there. That would be a maybe of that A and a maybe a map of string and A. And then council members will be a list of A's. So this A, for example, let's say it's a string. So that A could be a string. And then that would be string and maybe a string, a map of string and a string. String, string. <laughs> or if it was to be int, etc. Okay, so we're just saying much when we make things polymorphic, uh, you know, in, in other areas, uh, this is what it's saying. So it's just saying we, we're able to pass that along. So that's pretty cool. It's quite handy. We, that's kind of like, a, you know, the beginnings of understand, realizing that um, types are almost like their own functions. You know, we, essentially we're saying, well, you give me an A and I'm going to return you, you know, uh, these values or these constructors with that a inside of them so you can have different gov directories using different types yeah mm. Mm. right so let's go a little bit further down one part of our application might represent people with tuples there we go there's our reasoning so it might be there there's a type uh, in that scenario gov directory and a tuple of string string in. However, another part could use a gov directory of person. So it could literally use gov directory. Let's bring this down. Uh, what am I doing? Let's bring them next to each other. Yeah, there we go. Um, it could do like a person. So that gov directory could be either of, uh, it said like a tuple which was these or we could make it a person so then we know that in maya it'd be a person so you see like we can just literally that a could be anything it can be another type which is pretty cool isn't it so we you know rather than being like quite explicit there we're saying well actually we're gonna we're gonna make it a type so that's handy right however another part could be used to uh yeah we did we can define the following functor instance of gov directory by defining fmap since our underlying types are mostly functors themselves, this just involves calling fmap on the fields. Cool, let's do it. Let's make our own in instance. So we'll do an instance. That's the keyword for it. And we're going to do a functor of uh, gov directory where, and we'll do, so, we, you know, we've got to prove our bits now. So we know that an fmap takes an f, uh, an old, what do they call it? Old directory. Yeah. And then let's have a little look. Uh, let's do that. Let's see if it, it starts helping us out. What it expects to come back. We'll soon see. Uh, what's it saying? Not in scope. Do, do, do. Uh, the type map. Oh, yeah, of course it's not in scope. Okay, uh, where's it got? Is it date.map, I think? Uh, or is it its own? Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I need to import it. Uh, let's have a look. Hugo, I forgot. Is it just. I forgot. What it is. is it just. Uh, 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 uh. Let's have a look. Module. Containers, that's what it's from. I should have just clicked that. So we need to add that. Let's have a quick. So I'm going to go into my uh, there, my cabal file, which is like where to set up. And then I'm going to look at my imports, uh, which in this case, they're like popped up here. So I'm going to just pop it up here. And then we're just going to write containers. Uh, I think it's comma. I think it's comma. So I can't just have it like that. I think it's like that. Uh, and then we're going to do this and we're going to go like that reload we're going to let it reload and it's going to say it's there please say you're there Boop -boo. cool it's there and it's not happy about stuff but that's fine because we've left a type hole so there's a reason behind it not being happy uh, actually let's be explicit about map We won't import everything like that. Uh, yep, it's fine. So we're just making sure we're just grabbing map for this. Uh, oh, maybe I should explain what a map is. 
if nobody knows i'll just do it just like a really quick one uh so yeah map is kind of like you could think of it as uh, uh it's kind of like a list basically of things uh, a map of things and then it's saying that it has two values so it's first one being a string and it's second one being an a in this scenario uh but the first one's like look upable so uh it's what's the what's the word for it i don't know what the word for it is uh oh yeah key value key value pairs there we go I remembered it so that'd be your key and that'd be your value yeah that's basically what it's saying so this is saying that we can make a map and then there's its keys its keys are going to be string and its values are going to be of a so yeah that's basically that uh, let's go back to this. Uh, what I'll do is I'll copy it to say. No, actually, we're going to go through what it's going to, what it's going to tell us, give us back some results. Because what I'm going to send home when I'm doing this is type holes. Use type holes. Use them everywhere, like constantly, because they're so handy. Because what that it does two things. One, it gets you m more in tune with the the compilers helping you versus the compiler's a piece of shit and it annoys me and tells me I'm wrong all the time. <laughs> Which is like a good step to take. Do you know? <laughs> that that feeling of, uh, you know, it's crap and you're wrong isn't good. But if you're thinking of it from a point of view of like, oh, it's actually telling me what things need to be. So, yeah, I, I, I kind of wish I'd have worked that out a lot sooner. But there we go. I'm giving a trick away. Hmm. So here, it's essentially saying it expects a gov directory of B. Okay, well, let's return a gov directory. We know it needs to be gov directory of B. So here it's probably going to say it's B. But we know that gov directory uh, has uh, these values inside. These guys. Uh, have I done? Yeah, I have done that. Cool. So we're going to have to do... Actually, I'm going to line it a little bit different than what they've done uh, so we're going to return a gov directory and then so its first value is mayor mayor oh look it's found it okay and that's going to equal well what does mayor equal so if we look it just wants an a actually i'm gonna oh yeah, yeah let's do this okay i'll show another great nifty trick uh, let's do that um, may I interim? No? Oh, there we go. Interim mayor. Where are we? <laughs> yeah. Equals. Uh, and what's the other one? Cabinet. Cabinet. Okay. And that equals. And then uh, council members. That. And that equals. Let's put a type hole for each one of these. You can name type holes if you want, if you want to sort of know where things are. Can you? I think you can. No, you can't. Or is it? Is it the other way around? No. No, you can't. Oh, I thought you could name them. You can in PureScript. Does it? Found hole. No, it does. You can name them. Yeah, cool. So look, look, look. So if you're not sure, because it, if you look in the errors down here, we've got like a bunch of them. So you can name them if you want. I'll just leave it blank. So it's saying it's found a B. Okay. So it's saying that Maya, the return of that needs to be B. I found a B. And what have I got in uh, available to me to make a B? So let's have a look. I've got an F. Okay. This is the bit you need to look at. So when you see a found the type holes, first it'll give you what it expects it to be. So it's saying B. Okay. Some extra information, but we won't worry about that. And then the next part, which is cool, is like what's available in scope for you to use. Um, yeah, so we've got an old uh, directory. <laughs> Should I call that directory? And that's like a gov directory of A. And then we've got a function that does A to B. Okay, so how are we going to get to uh, the A? How are we going to get the A out? 
okay so that's basically the question but we know that we know that our, our f is what we is our first bit that we need um, i know it's on the right hand side and you can just clearly see the answer maybe i should cover it up there we go ha, look at that instead <laughs> f okay and now it's saying uh down here that we need an a and we can get an a of here here's our a but how do we get to it uh first i'm going to rename that so it's properly named and then when you want to get we know that this is of type that and when you want to get to a specific um an internal value of it you do this uh, oh hello uh, and then we'd want maya wouldn't we actually i wonder what type power would tell us here would it even tell us which one to use uh so it wants oh look this is what i was explaining before that types uh are very much like functions because it's saying i found a hole where you give a um you give me a gov directory of a and i'll return you its content so that's what it wants there and then this is exactly what that does which is seem a bit weird i mean you can uh i won't explain it like thoroughly i'll just give you an in, you know like a start getting a feel a feel of these things so we know that maya actually does that it, it we're getting the maya value out of old directory which is the gov directory so we're getting that it's not related to this maya per se it's related to this one which is grabbing a value and that's giving us an a okay so this one uh it's saying it wants to be a maybe a maybe of yeah so where is it it may be of b okay so you'd assume it'd be a just uh and it's now it's found a whole of b but if we actually look that should be of maybe so potentially we don't want to gr make it adjust what if we uh use what if we do uh let's think about this i think i know the answer actually uh so we'll grab let's grab this this out let's grab this out except it's not maya at all let's grab this out okay uh what is wrong with it yeah that's fine that's fine we'll put two there <laughs> is it that way around hold on which uh yes it is that way yes 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 let's say we want an f oh i'm just uh what are we doing found hole of a expects okay well i'm just gonna cheat i'm pretty sure it's that no it's not define old directory director that's why it's not happy okay i'm pretty sure i think it's that let's have a little double check yeah okay so why is it that i'll explain why it's that uh so when we grab okay we our type hole before we did any of this uh it said it wanted a maybe of b okay so we know that this actually returns us like a maybe of whatever uh okay so and we know we've got a function again that does a to b and how can we keep we saw with f map which is what that is actually i should have explained that if i do it because that was infix if i do it uh prefix uh, like that so f map takes a function of a to b okay and this is of maybe of a we know you know much like when we did that we've got we got an a back we're here we're going to get a maybe of a you see how it's a maybe of a and then um we're going to f map so we're going to grab actually let's just quickly uh how am i going to do this like this Whoop. here we go i'll do it like this because it'll make a little bit more sense 
So F map. That's an A to a B it wants. And then what we're getting there is a maybe of A. Okay, in a whole type hole, if we still look at the type hole here, that's saying it wants a maybe of B. Okay, but we know that F map does exactly that. It takes that wrap, that wrapping, which is what the functor is, it takes the inner value, applies it to a function, which does A to B, and it returns us, it returns us a maybe, oops, uh, <laughs> a maybe of B. Okay, which is exactly where that type hole is. That type hole saying, I want to get a maybe of B. So we're just doing that. We're just passing the F, which is an A to B. This is a maybe of A. And then we grab that bit out, pass it into the function, and then that will return us maybe, because it rewraps it, doesn't it, with an F map. Rewraps it. So that's what happens there. Uh, like that. Or... As I did it before, uh, this is exactly the same as fmap. Um, yeah, that's what happens there. So, what's happened to la musique? Où est la musique? Oh, it's over. We're going back round again. So, I need to get some more tracks made. So, every... How long have I got? I've made 1 hour, 12 minutes, 43 seconds worth of tracks. So, every 1 hour, <laughs> 12 minutes, 43 seconds... You're going to have to think of new things. Uh, sorry, you're going to hear the same thing again. Cool. Okay, well, I won't sort of bore you, but um, we can see what happens here. So it's a map of string B. Uh, that's what it expects. So we can do with cabinet. So we can just do exactly the same. We're just applying the F. So you can see we're just using F map to whatever it's wrapped in. Hold on, let me just get rid of that one. Whatever cabinet, so cabinet here returns us a map of string A, um, and then we're F mapping in the F, and then that'll return us a map of string B. Yeah. And then same with council members. Whoa, whoa. Copy that. Okay, so we've created our own functor, though it's not very well aligned, but. Uh, there it is, a little bit better. Whoa, hello. Whoa, what am I doing? Jay, thank you. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's our own functor. Oh, note. <laughs> that is just a synonym, synonym for fmap. Actually, I can show, show you that. Let's prove it to ourselves that that is indeed the case. Uh, like that. Okay, so we'll go here. When it goes, boof. Uh, and then we'll go look at the source of it. Will it find it? If I click on it, there it is. That functor, blah, 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 which is exactly the same as what a functor is, uh, means fmap. So yeah, it's exactly the same. And that's like in, in you know, right in the core inside. Uh, yep, 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 yep. So, now we have our own functor instance. Uh, transforming the underlying data type of our directory class is easy. We can just uh, person from tuple um, bind to, sorry, fmap old directory. Which is demonstrate, uh, let me just bring this down just to show that. Uh, where was it? Person from tuple. Yes, yeah, so a person from tuple. That's that. And then an old directory is whatever that happens to be. So old directory, you know, we said it could just be like a maybe of something, or maybe of person, or maybe of, you know, whatever, gov directory. And then we're saying that, uh, yeah, when we fmap it, so let's quickly, oh, yeah, it'll take a while to write an example. <laughs> but we're just saying that now we can literally uh, convert that Oh no, old directory into a person from tuple. So that'd be into a person. Yeah. Does that make sense? If not, ask a question. Actually, should I just, instead of saying, oh yeah, that works, let's try it. Come on. 
proof is where the pudding or something like that. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Go somewhere here. Oh my god, look at all these I've got open. No, I haven't. I think it's that one. Yep, yeah, there it is. Let's try it. I'll do that. We'll reload our here. It'll say could not load data map because uh, we need to reload this. Yes, please. The REPL hasn't recognized that we updated the Cabal file a while ago. So that's why it wasn't happy. Uh, yeah, just I don't want you to change anything. Thank you. <laughs> uh, what are we doing here? We're going to... Uh, 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 uh. Oh, yeah, we're importing. Uh, was it Journey we called it? Yeah, there we go. And then we're going to test this, this theory out. So person from tuple. Uh, have we got that in scope? And then we're going to make an old directory. Which in our scenario is going to be... What do we need to give it? Uh, do we need to give it person from tuple? So we need to give it something that's that. Uh, and it'll convert it into... Okay. So that person from tuple. I don't think... I don't think it's going to work. Let's try it. I'm doing it wrong. I've got a good feeling. Uh, because I'm not, for one, I'm not wrapped in anything. Uh, I can't F map over nothing. So let's just call it that. So look what happens. Boom, it worked. Did it work? Hold on. Yeah, it did. It's a maybe person. Is it? No. What have I done? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Yeah, it has worked. Why did it not just return us? Hold on, hold on. So that's a maybe person. I thought that calling it... Okay, let's try this. Is maybe. <laughs> oh, I've not done it right, have I? Why have I not done it right? Uh, so that's going to be our A, and then that's going to be our B, and we need it wrapped in the functor. So this is our functor, and this is our A, and that takes that A and converts it to a B. Okay, well, let's try. An alternative uh, instead of just we'll do this oh hello uh, we'll do it like that do, do, do. Oh, why do you do that there we go okay it's a list of persons okay well I was expecting it uh, no, it does work. Yeah, so it, it is giving us back. Just John Doe. A list. It's a list of person. I guess. Oh, uh, I haven't done a show instance. That's why we can't see anything. Uh, I was going mental. I was like, why isn't it just show me? Yeah, we need. We'd need to, to also do a show instance. So then the this could show us. Cool, so that's part one, done. Uh, part two, applicative functors or functors. Welcome to part two of our series on monads and other functional structures. We'll continue building our foundation of these ideas to, by exploring the concept of applicative functors. If you don't have yet a solid grasp yet, go back to one or otherwise, if you already know, go to three. No, we'll carry on. So functors are falling short. It doesn't say R, ah, but it says falling short. Mm. So in part one, 
we discussed functors type class we found it allows us to run transform transformation on data regardless how the data is wrapped uh, no matter if our data were a list a maybe or an eva or even a custom type we could simply call fmap however what happens when we try to combine wrapped data for instance if we try uh, in ghci to interpret these calculations we'll get type errors okay so we're just uh -huh. yeah which um, i guess it might not make sense straight away so we're saying i want to times you know just four by just five so no i don't have a uh, type very well blah, 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 blah. i'm not happy so okay cool what if i want to times nothing with just two again it's not happy uh, I don't have a type variable argument in the constraint of num maybe a so it's essentially saying you know if I time something I don't know how to times things that are wrapped in just oh, sorry in maybe um, yeah this works with a num class num but there's no such thing as a num maybe a it'd be like num int or something like that so it doesn't know so you could make your own if you wanted <laughs> much like we made our own uh fmap and stuff but yeah it'd be a bit silly you might as well not do that and do it properly so can functors help us here we can use fmap to wrap multiplication by the particular wrapped maybe value let's have a look so we'll do uh let me just make that a little bit bigger because i guess it's going to go through this uh we don't have to do let in here we can just do f so if we do the function so we know um yes yeah, so we know that this function is actually in uh, it's an 888 day day <laughs> yeah so if we pass it if we f map uh just four okay and then we look at the type of f it's going to say it's of maybe and it's returned as a function of a to a so basically we this expects two values and we've only unwrapped the first value so we've essentially made you know we've we've basically made that uh wrapped in a maybe so it's going to be adjust so if you look at it, it's that's still expecting the second value to come in. Hence, uh, this is a function. Cool. Uh, and then, but, uh, what's the other one? Yeah. And then that instantly will just return us nothing. It's not, because it doesn't, you know, that's just going to go, no, nope, nothing. Uh, which it kind of doesn't, it should just say nothing. But, okay. But that's what it does. Because you can't F map. Do you remember up here? Or do we remember? I'm saying you like it's just one person. But <laughs> uh, where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Uh, oh, we did have an example. There, here it is. Here it is. So if we F map. Yeah. Uh, and our first value is whatever. And we give a nothing. Then it's just instantly going to return us to nothing. That's what's happened. That's our second value. Nothing. So instantly when we F map a maybe of nothing. It, we're just going to get nothing back. So. <coughs> Excuse me. This gives us a partial function. Oh, <coughs> wow. Oh, excuse me. This gives us a partial function wrapped in a maybe, but we still cannot unwrap this and apply it to just five. So you know we've only got the first bit, but we haven't done the second bit. Mm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I coughed and it's. Uh. Something sour at the back of my throat. <coughs> oh, yeah. Let's go for it. Yeah, there's no fear. It's all right. Oh, that's a terrible joke. Right. Is that a dad joke? Is that does that count as a dad joke? Hold on a second. There we go. Oh, dear me, dear me. Sorry. Right, that's that. <laughs> Uh, where was I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So this gives us uh, a partial function wrapped in the maybe, but we still cannot unwrap this and apply it to just five in a generic fashion. So we have to resort to code specific 
to the maybe type. Okay, so let's just copy that. I guess this is like a was it part two, wasn't it? Cool. Okay, so let's have a look at its type. So it's a maybe of A to B, takes a maybe A, and returns us a maybe B. Okay, so when we give its first value here, if that's a nothing, I don't care about this. I'm going to return a nothing. If the first value is just of F, so you see this has got to be a function, okay? So maybe of A to B. And the value, then, well, if we look at the value, we know that's a maybe A. Oh, 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 oh. <coughs> oh, I wonder what it is. It's tickling. Oh, what can I have it? I haven't got anything at hand. I'm parched. Parched. Blech. Blech. Okay, so <laughs> we know that the vowel mm. is a maybe. So how do we get inside uh, the value inside of there? Well, we get to the A by F mapping over him into F. Um, but that yeah, that won't work if you think about it. <coughs> How can I solve this? I need like... Oh, it's right at the back. Is it because it's hot? <coughs> I'm going to blame it on cat hair. It's always a cat. It's that cat at the top of my screen. on Up there. Up there. It's that cat scratching the back of my throat. <coughs> Yeah, so it's not going to work because this needs to be an A to B. But in fact, it's a maybe A to B. So, yeah, shouldn't have copied and pasted that. <laughs> but we've got a thing called applicatives to the rescue. So much like we've done the first uh, set of sort of rules we were looking at is uh, just FMAP. And how FMAP, where is its type that we gave it? Uh... Oh, I didn't save it, did I? I didn't save it. I just deleted it. Oh, thanks. Uh, Fmap was of the type... Oh, it's so tickly. <coughs> <coughs> oh. oh, it's literally I got some, something stuck. Uh, okay. So, um, A to B. Oh. <laughs> F A and then F B. So you see what's going on there? So that's our functor, you know, our maybes, our lists. And then we're grabbing the inf information out. We're running this function against that information. And we're putting it, its result back in its original F, the functor. So back into a maybe or whatever it might be. Okay, but in this scenario, when we were doing this one, we've got a maybe function. So really, it wants this. Oh, it's got one, an applicative. It's explaining it here. So when we were doing new, uh, when we were doing a uh, blah, 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 an instance of functor, it had one thing which was fmap. Well, here it's got two. It's got pure, and it's got that apply. It's called apply. Um, <coughs> hence applicative. <laughs> I'm dying on live, dying, dying live on Twitch. I don't know what it is. It's right at the back. Oh, I'll tell you a funny story. <laughs> My poor wife. We we made like some nice food, and uh, what do we have on top? I don't know. Some sort of a herb, but it came like a a, a bit of wood. Uh, you know, like like you got herb, you got li little leaves, um, but we didn't realise that the, that little branch was actually quite hard. And we're eating, and like you know, if people sort of choke a little bit on a on on like a fish, like a, a oh my god, on like on the bone of a fish, well, it was the same scenario, but with this bit of wood. And <laughs> she was just poor love. She was just uh, oh evening, uh, yeah. I'm just giving an an antidote to my coffin. Uh, what happened to my wife and uh so it was like this little bit of stick and basically like a fishbone it I, I i shit you not it got stuck right in the 
back of the throat, like in the, it just got stuck in the skin. And then it was literally the, the little bit that, that hangs down in the back of your throat. It was just hitting the back and like just making her want to be sick the whole time. Awful. I literally had to get in there. We had to like try and grab some tweezers and pull this stick out. Um, yeah, it feels like what I've got now, except I don't feel like I'm puking. I just feel like there's a stick in there or something. <clears throat> I mustn't do it. I need like some honey or something, but I'm here. So I'm explaining. Oh, yeah, by the way, uh, hi, uh, Guafa. Uh, we're going through uh, a, a set of things that's basically it's like, it's like a journey to Mona Transformers, which is a little bit more advanced than what I normally do, but I just wanted like a little break from uh, the basic stuff. Well, it's not basic, but the, the, the beginner stuff. So I'm just doing this like for a day uh, and then here's the link in case because I don't think the chat keeps a history when you start does it it kind of like goes away uh, so yeah so we're well we're on that one but this is part two uh, so yeah you might need to watch the beginning of the video but if it don't make sense don't worry just ask questions because uh, I'm more than happy to answer them. Um, so what we've been displaying is essentially uh, uh, fmap which is like the ability to do... Are you you're familiar? Well, cool. Well, then you're going to re-familiarize re yourself with them. So I, I am too, but it's kind of like it's handy to... You know, like the more you go over them, the more they just like sink in a little bit better. So that's what I'm doing, basically. So we just did uh, functors, which obviously I guess you know. And now we're working our way towards applicatives. And then we're comparing how functors... Uh, of like an, the representation of f map was this and then here we had an issue and then sorry let me grab these two uh, and then the representation of apply when you this is when you make instances we made our own instance uh, where do we make it here we made our own instance of maybe for uh, f map or functor sorry and then we just, you know, that's how it works. And then now, <clears throat> which was basically anything wrapped in a A of a functor, so a list, a maybe, get a function, wrap it back up. And then now we're going to do something with apply, so applicative, because the issue that we're trying to solve is that we've got something that's of a maybe A, so that, that'd be like our F. And then we've got something else that's of, here it is, so something else that's of maybe and the function a to b. So there's our other f. And then that return us that f in b. So basically we want to grab this information out of there, put it into here, and then the result back out and put it into here. So we've, we've thought, okay, well, we've done functors already. So, uh, sorry, <clears throat> yeah, we've done the functor. So why not just get our value? which we know is of maybe A to get our A, and then we'll F map it into F. Well, we're stuck because it's still wrapped in something here. So, um, yeah, that's literally where we've got up to. Uh, I'll probably, for now... No, I won't. I'll do it like this. I'll comment that out because that, won't, that will not work. Okay. So, yeah, and uh, this is kind of like... Because I think... And even doing like this is a good way to getting into monads and things because it's kind of like just nicely ramps you up um, into it, into what's going on and how we're manipulating, you know, data and things and using types to help us with that. <clears throat> okay. Oh, it's gone now. Whew. Uh, the pure function takes some value and wraps it in a minimal context. Okay. Uh, the, that bind function called sequential application not bind one at all the apply called sequential application i just call it apply it takes two parameters first it takes a function wrapped in a context yeah so that's our function wrapped in the context uh next a wrapped value so that one so again it's a value wrapped in the same context so wrapped value its output is a result of applying the function to the value. So we do that bit, 
pass it to the A, we get the B back and rewrap it. Okay, so the functors have always got, again, all the Fs have got to be the same. So this will only work. That can't be an either. They have to all be maybe. So <clears throat> the pure function takes some values and wraps it in a minimal context. Oh, I've just stopped reading it. Uh, its output is results of pine. Okay. So next, a wrap value is it, its output is result of rewrap context. An instance is called an applicative functor because it allows us to apply apply <laughs> a wrapped function okay since sequential application which i'll be honest i'll never call it that but you know you can if you want feel free <laughs> takes a wrap function we often begin by wrapping something with either pure or fmap uh, uh, uh. so if we look at pure takes an a and returns us an f of a Okay, right. Well, what's going on there? Don't know, but it will be explained. Don't you worry. This will become more clear with some examples. It sure will. Let's first consider multiplying maybe values. Oh, is my mic? No. Okay. Yeah, it's playing up. It kind of played up yesterday at about the hour mark. My mic was just like, <laughs> I'm going to turn myself. Well, not even a mic. Uh, o OBS, whatever it's called, this streaming thing. I'm going to turn your mic off. And yeah, I had to be told. Uh, so let's play around with this in the REPL. So we've got our REPL open. So let's have a little look. So we're doing just five. Uh, and we're, here we're using functor. Uh, uh, hold on. Can it be called sequential application? Because the function can be anything. It doesn't have to be one argument function yep yeah because yeah, yeah. if you look in this scenario uh you know this would yeah. all right let me reread that to give me anything doesn't have to be one argument function so you mean the function here can take more than one argument i think that's what you mean then yes because uh, that's what we were trying to do a little bit further up <clears throat> Yeah, so we were trying to do up here. That was like what we were trying to reproduce. So we're just doing, ah, oh, haha, it starts from here. This is like the origin of it all, which is just four times just five. Uh, obviously, that takes two values. You know, it takes an AA, returns an A. Uh, obviously, these don't work, these don't work. And then we've come further down, and now we're showing that some things do work. So in this scenario, uh, quite understandably, uh, we get just 20. Again, ignore this. I'm going to have to work out how to get rid of this. Uh, I do type that in and it goes, yeah, cool, you've got that. But I'm still going to show you it. <laughs> Don't know why. Uh, yeah, so what's happening here is because uh, this is literally expecting. So this now, let's have a little look. Type. Uh, let's do four times what's that okay that's saying it expects an a and it'll return you an a okay but then if we go do the type of just times on its own it wants another a okay so we just we partially applied the the four and we're saying we're waiting for another value and then f map gives us uh, that other value it takes uh, there so it does this it takes that value out pops it into a to b which is what this is, A to B, but it's just A to A. Um, and then it'll return us, again, that, that wrapped with the B. Uh, so if you look, the result here was it's wrapped back up. It's got the just, it's wrapped back up. It's done the transformation, 4 times 5, and it's returned us the result wrapped back up in the just, okay, which works. So what about, oh, we're still up here, we're still up here. I was going down then. What if we do that with nothing? I'm typing it in, but it's just... <laughs> it's, I mean, look, it's written right there. But we'll do, we're going to do it. Go for it. The more you type... I should have typed it out. You remember it better then. So four times nothing. We know that our maybe functor, our maybe functor here, when our second value that we give to fmap is a nothing, it's going to return us a nothing. 
So that's exactly where it's done. It's gone. Blech. You can have nothing for that. Thank you. Right. So what about this? How in the heck is this one working? Du, du, du. So what I'll do... Yeah, I'll press that first. Okay, so that's just 20. So I used to get this a little bit... No, that's fine. Oh, go away. So I'm just... Whoa, what's going on here? Some flags have not... You've gone mental. Okay. <laughs> Basically, don't do that. Yeah. Uh, so here, we're doing apply. So how is this working? How is this grabbing? Okay, so this is still our A to B. You can see we've got just the one value here. So we're still A to B. We're using pure. So if we remind ourselves pure, oh, excuse me, is an A to FA. Okay, well, it's going to, once we do that part, it knows that our F is going to be adjust. Okay. Um, so it's essentially saying, grab this A, and it's going to pop it in there, and then return it by wrapping, wrapping it in a pure. And then that'll be just, just 20. Uh, yeah, another way would be to do this. Another way to would be to do this. Uh, <coughs> I think, if I'm correct. Um, like that. Yeah, there we go. It's another way of doing that. We've just, you know, we've just done it ourselves. But that's what Pure's doing. Okay. Boop, boop, boop. Just 20. Let's have a look at another one. Uh, well, yeah, if it's a nothing, it's going to do exactly the same. Nothing. Don't care. Right. Now, here we go. So this is the bit you were just talking about. Wafa. Um, Wafa. I don't know. I'm going to say that. Gaffa. I'm going to drop the W. I'm going to say it's a, it's a silent W in your gaffer. Uh, cool. So now we're like stepping it up a bit. We are stepping it up. And... It's gonna, that's now working, yet we've only given it, look at that, it's kind of like, how, how in the hell is it doing this? So, if we wrap some stuff up a little bit better, yeah, that still works, okay. So, if we look at it, what it's doing is actually, it's doing this bit, first and foremost, which would give us, that business and then it's taken us this and it's given us that oh not that way that but how's it doing that that's probably the important bit because um yeah it makes sense oh and at any point um any if any of them are nothing when you're changing them like that which is what you're saying the sim, uh, sequential application if any of them are nothing because it's you see how it's doing it one side the other one side the other if any of those are, are, are nothing uh it'll just go nah nah not interested uh yeah oh how did that one work i didn't even have look it's like some sort of voodoo magic yeah i don't know <laughs> that's a bit weird isn't it? uh i must have deleted it cool so if any of those are nothing it's going to return us to nothing okay Im implementing an applicative so let's have a look how it's actually working so we get an idea so from these examples we can tell that the applicative instance for maybe is implementing exactly how we would expect let's do it uh okay well i'll just talk through it <clears throat> so we we uh, express the fact that pure for maybe is just adjust so why is it adjust because if we look at pure it gives us a value and then we return it wrapped in our functor with that value. So for our case, we're giving back a just 
and then so actually you could look at it like this so that it's doing it but uh, <clears throat> like this we'll use our magic maybe there it is and then we'll use our magic nothing I could have probably done it a bit easier but I'll just do it like this anyway yeah these already exist in base so if I try and override them cool and what we can do is also that yeah that's basically what it's that's what it's doing there in case it, it wasn't any sense <coughs> so saying when you give it a value of a i'm going to wrap it in my maybe um my baby type so that's what's happening so it's going pure give me an a i'll wrap it but obviously if you have an applicative for any other ones it will wrap it in that applicative that you're in so it'd be like maybe you know etc etc lists whatever it might be <coughs> excuse me so again we demonstrate this part so if it's any either of the values passed to apply is a nothing then it's going to return us a nothing and then now this is the other uh, section so we've got just of f and we'll say an f is actually a function okay and an x is like a value okay so how do we get oh look can you see on the right define f a to b <laughs> okay anyway <laughs> uh, and our x will be our a and this is our a to b yeah so how do we what do we return for for a maybe applicative well we want to return it wrapped in adjust because again look at it it'll wrap in adjust this is our uh uh, uh, sorry our functor wrapped in so here it is it's wrapped with a function inside of it and it is just a value so we've got an a to b we've got an a and then we're just going to grab that and that pop them together and return it wrapped in that just okay so that's how it's doing apply for this but remember this needs to be a function it's not going to wrapped wrapped as well you know, if that was just a fun, then it wouldn't work. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, and then the next one it shows us is list. And there's, it does list interpretation, which is not the best to explain things. But um, yeah, so it's, it's doing the same. Uh, if it's pure, then it'll be a list of A. Yep. And then here it's basically uh, F is and X is. So... Uh, a list of s uh, well, it yeah I should have called it like ffs oh no f is, is f oh yeah yeah a list of functions and a list of values okay so it's just saying here grab all the list of functions out and every list of values out and then just pop them together and then you'll see it's wrapped again in a list so that's what that's saying but yeah it's basically saying for every because they're both lists for every value, uh, grab one out and then uh, combine them together and then return a list of that, of this um, horribleness. Yeah, I tend not to use that, uh, but yeah. Anyway, the pure function is what we expect. We take a value and wrap it as a singleton in a list. When we chain operations, we now take a list of functions. Uh, and We now take a list of functions. We might expect to apply each function to the value in a corresponding posi position. However, what actually happens is we apply every function in the first list to every value in the second list. Yeah, so that kind of does that make sense? I mean, it'll, it'll we'll, we'll see it in a minute. Um, yep. So when we only have one function, this results in familiar mapping behavior. But when we have multiple functions, then all sorts of magic happens. So let's have a look. This is just with the first, the F is, and we've only got one, technically. Actually, we, what are we doing it over here? Yeah, we're doing F is. So we've only got one F is here. This is our A to B. And then what's that return us? This literally just works like an F map, if you think about it. <laughs> but yeah, so one, two, three, and then this is our F is the list. It's going to grab the one, two, three, put it into here, which should be the result. So one times four, two times four, da, 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 and then wrap it back up in a pure, which is the list. So it'd be four, eight, twelve. Yeah. 
which is essentially but this is when it gets a little bit different so now we can do it like this what's going on here so now it does it slightly different it will run this number okay and it'll go over so it'll be do plus one first which is two uh how how which order is it yeah 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 yeah. so it goes so it goes like this it goes one two three with the plus ones so it's two three four and it does one two three times five five times fifteen one two three times ten ten twenty thirty so it's going do that one first in the list then with that one and then them with that one yeah so it's returning that so that's kind of interesting so this makes it easy to do certain operations like finding uh, every pairwise product of two lists Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Let's grab it. Paste it. So look at the results. So what's it going? It's going 10, 20. Okay, so we're grabbing that and that. Um, we're times in. Oh, and we're putting it into the times. So 10 times 1 is 10. Uh, 10 times 2 is. Tw no, which way around was it? Uh, yeah. Which way did I go? Is that, 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 that. Yes, it goes 10 times 1, 20 times 1, yeah, 30 times 1. Uh, cool. And then, ah, uh, so we're combining them. We're using that, but w this would be like our left and right. Uh, but instead of a function, the times being here, it joins them up here. So that makes sense? So it's like that's where we're doing the sequential application. We're sequencing them together. So it's still doing the same behavior that this was doing by going one, uh, 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 like that to get our first, sorry, one over them, two over them, three over them. What? I don't know. <laughs> I keep getting it the wrong way around, don't I? <laughs> Okay, here we go. Back to it. One, two, three over that. One, two, three over that. And then one, two, three over that. So this is doing 10, 20, 30 times by one. And then it's doing 10, 20, 30 times by two. 10, 20, 30 times by three. And it's grabbing this value and that value and then put it left and right. Okay. Does it show? I hope it shows us why. That'd be a lot better. Uh, okay, so you might be wondering how we might do parallel application of functions. For instance, we might want to use the second list example above, but have the result be 2, 10, 30. Uh, 2, 10, 30. Okay, uh, how is it growing 2, 10, 30? 2, 10, and 30. Oh, sorry, it's, it wants a sum of them all. Is that what it's saying? Uh, have... For instance, we might want to use a second list above, but have, I don't know what it's trying to do, 2, 10, 30. I'm not sure it's getting the two. But anyway, there's a constructor for this called zip list. It is a new type around a list whose applicative instance is, a, is designed to use this behavior. So zip list. Okay. So there's our set. Oh, yeah, well, they're totally different than the above. Why are you like, oh, they're meant above here. Oh, God, I was a bit confused then. So it's like 2, 10, uh, what was the values they wanted? 2, 10, and 30. Yeah, okay, that makes sense, 2, 10, 30. So how is it going to do that? Uh, except this is going to be totally different because it's 5, 10, and 15. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so it's just saying I only want it to apply one value, uh, you know, to match them side by side. So I just want that to be there, that one to do that one, and that one to do that one. Uh, that. Oh, I haven't imported it, have I? Not in scope. Uh, okay, well, we'll pretend it's in scope, but that's basically what it's doing. I guess, I, I think this, yeah, it's kind of missing explaining, well, you can kind of see it, I guess. Yeah. Oh, it goes into the next one because once you apply and you can F map at the end, I guess it's doing. Yeah, so it's not really missing too much, I guess. 
I mean, if you want to get a more thorough, yeah, you'd probably want to look more at more instances of it being built up, uh, which is where the Haskell book is probably goes into it quite nicely. Okay, so next, monads. Um, that stuff is just repeated. Monad primer. Actually, what I might do whilst we do monads is quickly pop it to la toilette because I'm dying. Uh, yeah, I'll turn this off. Yeah, sorry. I, you know, I turned it off. I, I was saying all sorts, actually. It's quite exciting. I made really good jokes um, that were missed. I was just saying I've got an Aphex Twin jumper, which is a bit the opposite of doing classical music. And then I was reading through this. So, yeah, is it good? Cool. I'll uh, start again. Yeah, I guess you saw me highlighting things and thinking, what's he on about? Just talking to nothing. Uh, where was I had something that was quite interesting well forgotten it now it can't be that interesting that's what you say don't you uh, so there are dozens of monad tutorials blah 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 uh, analogies in particular is amusing well I mean I, I don't know it's not that amusing people are giving it a go aren't they but it is a bit yeah it's kind of like the big thing isn't it I guess if you get to know monads in, uh, in Haskell it's like oh and then it's almost like the only way you can understand it is if you write uh, a blog post about it <laughs> which is yeah uh, I don't know I don't think to be honest I think monads are easier in context when you actually use them versus uh, this sort of stuff uh, they're only then this sort of stuff only becomes makes more sense once you've used them for a while I find well I've definitely found because I I spent too much time just in books and just going okay okay dig it in dig it in dig it in but really what I should have spent more time doing is is coding it and just use, using them and then getting a feel for it that way and then sort of going in depth and, and understanding the types but yeah I learned the hard way unfortunately so just like functor is an applicative functor, Haskell represents monads with a type class. It has two functions. Uh, yeah, so it's got return and it's got that bind. That's what you call it. Um, yeah, you'll see. You'll probably see that quite a bit. Um, not this, actually, you won't probably see it quite a bit. You'll see do blocks quite a bit, but that'll come later. Cool. So uh, a return is an A. Again, a bit like uh, apply or applicative, it wraps the M. Sorry, so yeah, it returns it back in the M context. 
which is RM is for monad. And then uh, bind. So it takes an MA and A of MB and returns just that MB. Okay, so that MA is whatever monad context it is. So again, like uh, applicative or functor. So an F for the functor, you know. And the applicative is also an F. But so MA and it'll be in. And then we've got a function from A to MB and then MB. What they should say, which they haven't. Uh, oh, what? Well, yeah, right. And just uh, chain them all along. Yeah, it can be fun. I did have an ex colleague that uh, much, much, much preferred when. Um, oh, what have I done here? Why is that wrong? F is not in scope. Oh, we'll ignore that. Why not? F. Oh, of course it's not. It's in fun. Yeah. Can't ignore it. Uh, she, they much preferred. <laughs> I don't want to like narrow it down to it might be, but I've just done it. Yeah, they much preferred to just use uh, the bind all over the shot. Uh, which in when it's small, yeah, that's handy. But when you start doing like complex stuff, do does. Yeah, I don't know. Do does become really, really handy, especially when you have got more than one or two things happening. Um, you know, one or two binds, and especially when you start doing monad transformers. Then do blocks are really handy. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So what we're doing, we're showing this. I was going to grab those two, right? And I was going to pop that because uh, this is a thing they should have probably shown, uh, which they quite haven't. We'll ignore the pure, uh, but we'll look at this one for sure. So if you look, uh, it's not too far off it looks like these are swapped around so that and that is there and then it's kind of similar i guess yeah that's kind of what there's some similarities it looks like the things are swapped but when i uh now whenever i see sort of uh doing that i just think i've got something that's wrapped in a monad and then uh i've got to pass it a function it expects a value and it's going to rewrap it in a monad uh, that's how i sort of envision so i always know the second value that i'm going to pass to this has to be some sort of a, uh, a function that expects an input which is the result of this so it literally grabs the a out of there into there makes a b and returns an mb yeah that's kind of how i think about it uh okay so what does it say? Uh, these two functions correspond to two ideas from above. The return functions specify how to wrap the value of the monad context. Yeah. And the two greater, greater, equal operator or bind functions specify how to combine two operators within the context. Let's clarify this further by exploring a few specific monad instances. Cool. Let's do that. We'll start up here. And then, what are we on? Yeah, okay. Just double checking. Um, I probably after this one. What am I doing? Uh, yeah, okay. So let's start with this. So maybe fun one. Maybe fun one. And that's going to be a, so it's a sting. A string to uh, maybe int. Yeah. Uh, and then maybe funk one yeah find it thank you and if that's nothing or an empty string then return nothing and then maybe funk one and if it's a string uh, then we'll do adjust uh, what's it doing oh yeah oh okay so it's just checking out its length length of stir cool so it's just like a safe length. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's that bit. Let's do maybe funk two. Two. I've gone to three already. Okay, so that does an int to a maybe uh, float. Okay. Let's find you. I'll rename it to two, not three. Again, I. Uh, if uh, I 
modulus mod and 2 is equal to 0. So this is like a odd, odd or even, isn't it? Uh, let's just realign this a little bit more. I'll just I'll, uh, show an example. So uh, we'll do mod uh, 6 of 2. So that's 0. Okay. So mod 7 of 2. That's 1. So anything that returns 0 is even, and anything that doesn't is odd. Okay, so that's what it's doing. So if then... Oh, so if that is equal to... 2 is equal to 0, then... Which way was it? I forgot. Uh, 7, 2. Yeah, so if it equals to 2, then it's even. So nothing. Otherwise... Actually, it's doing something else, isn't it? Why is it capital? It's not capital. Typo, typo. I've spotted a typo. <laughs> anyway, that's so lame, wasn't it? <laughs> Even said it. Uh, so we'll do from integral. Find it. Yes, it found it. Thank you. I. And it all times. It's doing a bit of pi. 3.141. Five nine. Yeah. Is that happy? Yeah. What we'll do actually is we'll uh should we quickly use it. Uh okay. So maybe funk let's do maybe funk two. We'll do maybe funk two and we'll give it seven. There we go. So that returns us a just of twenty one point nine nine one one seven. Which I assume is seven times that. Seven. Oh no, it's not going to be because it's from integral. It's not going to work that. But oh, it is going to work. Okay. Yeah, don't question it. Cool. And then funk free. You know what? I'll copy these ones because I can just explain them. It takes a float and returns a maybe list event. Oh, that's a little bit. It's a little bit more nested there. So if f, which is our float, is greater than 15.0, then nothing. Otherwise, just floor of f. So let's have a little look. Type of floor is it takes, uh, oh, it's constraint to a real fraction of a, integral of b. So it's an a to b. So it takes a real fraction and turns it into an integral. So floor of that and seal. I'll do a type. Don't do a type like that. There. And have I got... Oh, it's not even in scope. So I'd have to import it. Where does the seal come from? I guess it's like maths or something. Is there maths? It comes from numeric extras. Oh, okay. Well, we won't import it because I think it's just for that single function, to be honest. But yeah, uh, maybe we should. Yeah, go on. Why not? I can't remember if this goes to dot dot dot, in all honesty. I think it does, but we'll put it in anyway. Numeric extras, uh, we'll do this. We'll bring it in. Uh, here it is. It's all squashed and stuff, but it's there. We'll do that. Uh, we'll do this. It's changing. Yes, you do that. And uh, we'll do this. Okay, so I'm just reloading everything, basically. Oh, and I can get rid of that. What's wrong with you? What's happened? Add template Haskell to the top of a file. Why does it need temple template Haskell? Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Why not? Process failed. Oh, I didn't, I didn't like it. Failed. Failed with else just. <laughs> Where have I done it? Uh, didn't like that. It hasn't brought that in. But it can bring that in. What's not happy? Could match float with int. Have I brought in the wrong seal? Is that what's happened? Uh, let's just reload that again. 
What's the same? Float. Uh, couldn't match type float with type int. Maybe int, maybe float. I like it when uh, you end up just... You'd think that's the seal they were using, wouldn't you? Uh, they've not really sort of explained. I think it's going to be irrelevant to what we're trying to achieve, but I kind of like want it to work, because that's a little bit annoying. Couldn't uh, match type float with int. Okay, hold on. What have we put at the top of this? I don't know why we've got a template Haskell up there. Because it's clearly not doing any template Haskell. And we do a bit of that. Is it grabbing the floor from from here as well? Is that what it is? <laughs> no. You especially can't get it from there. Oh, I don't know where where's floor coming from. I thought floor was just uh, in prelude. Yeah, it is. So uh, was it there? There it is. Numeric extras. So I guess if we do this, it should be a little bit happier. It looks a little bit happier, doesn't it? What's not happening? Ambiguous. Ah, oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh. It's saying now that I've got two versions of, so, um, uh, quantified, oh my god, as N E. Qualified, not quantified. No, what? It is. Oh, try sealing instead. Yeah, okay. Oh. It is qualified. Or qua what, what am I doing? I've just totally had forgotten how to do this. Qualified. I thought it was that. Oh, it's at the beginning. Oh, oh my God. There we go. <laughs> Whew, I'll try that. Yeah, let me just try this one and then we'll try what you said. Because I think you're probably right. Any. Any. And. It doesn't. It doesn't like it. Okay, let's try sealing then. To double L, yeah. Oh, replace it. Spell it correctly. Yeah, that worked. Whoop whoop whoop. Thank you. Thank you. I've just imported all that stuff for no reason. Never mind. That makes more sense. Okay. Goodbye. We need to tell them it doesn't work. Uh, run maybe funks. So let's copy that one. Aha, now it's like uh, combining them together, isn't it? So what's this doing? It's taking a string and it's returning, us, returning to us a maybe list of ints. So it's doing a case. Uh, what's happening? I looked a bit. In numeric lectures, and it seems to return the same type. So seal float gives back a float. I think it complains because of that. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I didn't really... I just was expecting it to work. <laughs> I was being optimistic. Unlike my normal pessimist uh, self, I was being optimistic there. Hmm. So it's going to do a case match of maybe funk1 and the input, which is a string. So maybe funk1, I'm going to quickly um, turn that off because it keeps popping up. Okay, so maybe funk1 will return us a maybe of int. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I mean, yeah, they've normally they're pretty good... Um, 
what do you call it? They're, they're pretty good little tutorials from Monday Morning Haskell. So I'm not sure why that one's like that. Uh, there, yeah. I guess we could. I don't know. I think it's quite an old. I think it's been sitting around. So maybe it worked in an older version of GHC. I don't know. I, I don't think they're. I don't think these are particularly new. Uh, that could be another reason. Uh, so we're doing a case uh, which is returning us a maybe of int. So if it's a nothing, just do a nothing. If it's just i, uh, then do another case of maybe func2 with that i. And if it's a nothing, do nothing. And then otherwise, uh, take that just f and then maybe func over f. Uh, maybe free, sorry. Func free, which is the float. f is a float and i is a value. So it's basically saying int and then the result of that is a maybe float and then take that float and pass it into maybe func okay so we, it's kind of like stringing things along so it goes from one two there's a bleeding fly three it's raining how come the flies are still around don't know i thought don't they yeah flies all die like uh when it's not summer you'd think not all of them die but there's still some they love that shit <laughs> and uh, landing in it cool so we can see we're starting to develop a hideous triangle pattern yeah it's kind of hit yeah so it's like nesting itself isn't it so if i was to like go like this yeah we can see that it's progressively getting more and more like the triangle business um yeah so let's carry on uh, if we were to add more maybe functions onto this it would keep getting worse when we consider maybe as a monad we can make the code much cleaner let's take a look at haskell's implementation of maybe as a monad cool uh yeah so again let's let's create our own damn you we're gonna have our own maybe monad thank you don't want the likes of you cool that's exactly what i wanted to do thank you uh <laughs> just uh, nothing nothing not there there cool uh, uh, where's my backspace gone there it is cool so this is our own uh in and then in case people don't know what currying is whoops there so if we take a nothing and we bind that don't matter it's just going to return us a nothing if we do a just a so that's our value and then we bind it to a function okay well then it's just going to be f a yeah so we're just taking that out so let's have a little look at something uh, 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 hold define let's have a look so it gives us some types so f, if you have a look at f, f is an a. Yeah, this is why type holes, type holes for the win. Um, so f, if we look, is where was it? There. F is an a to maybe b, and then a is an a. And then I'm sure here the hole is saying it needs to be uh, a to maybe b. So where's an a to maybe b? It's right there. It's an f. Okay. So we, because when we looked at uh, monads, which was further up here, um, A to maybe B, maybe A. Uh, no, sorry. <laughs> I'm doing it all the wrong way around. It's not maybe. Stop making it worse for people. Here we go. There it is. Cool. So this is our MA. There. It's just in the just monad, A. And then this one is a function that goes A to MB. We've just not defined what that function is, you know, that's what we end up passing along. But this then becomes, we use the F. Well, if it's unsure, I mean, you can even start like this and then it, from the get go, it says it needs to be a maybe of B. Okay, okay, so how do we get a maybe of B? Well, we know that we've got an F which goes A to maybe a B, and we've got an A. So, okay, well, it's got to be FA, hasn't it? And that returns us maybe of B. Sweet. Uh, so, 
so the context of uh, the context that maybe Monad describes is simple. Well, it's not necessarily simple, but yeah, um, it describes. <laughs> Computations in maybe can either fail or succeed with a value. That's quite simple, I guess. Oh, I'll give it to you. Take it back. We can take any value and wrap it in this context by calling a value a success. We do this by just cons by we do this with the just constructor. We represent failure by nothing. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's a nothing or an FA, which is a maybe of whatever. So it'd be a just. We combine computation in this context by examining the results of the first computation. If it succeeds, we take its value and pass it to the second computation. If it fails, then we have no value to pass on to the next step. So the total computation is a failure. So this is where we're going to start. There it is. There it is. So instead of doing this crazy triangle, we're going to do our own version of it now uh, using binds. There they are. There they are. Okay, so let's grab this. And I mean, it should be fairly apparent if we do it. We'll make it like this. Yeah, yeah, that's better. Cool. So let's have a look at the types. We'll bring this right down and then it will make a little bit more sense. These types. OK, so we've got a maybe a function one with an input. OK, so that returns us. Uh, sorry. So we if we pass, we've got strings. So we pass a string to maybe func one and that returns us a maybe int. OK. Uh, what I should do is uh, get this, get this still. We still want this one because then we can sort of double check. Yep. So let's go func one. Here we go. So the outcome of that uh, would be our. Uh, there, there, there. So that'd be our MA. OK, because at the moment, maybe is a monad. Yeah. So maybe int. Cool. And now we want to pass it to uh, maybe func two. So if we look at maybe func two, OK, it's a function from int to maybe float. So if we have a look at that, a function from a, which is int, to maybe float, which is a b. OK, so the m does become a maybe, so maybe monad. So what we're saying now if we get the maybe a, which is the output of input and maybe function, uh, then we can pass that into maybe function two, because that's expecting an a, which is, so we're going to take that a out and pop it into this function. That gives us a maybe b. And then in the third scenario, you could literally say that'd be maybe b, that'd be b to c, and that'd be m c. So it just literally would be, whoops, hello. <laughs> and then uh, C, we'll go, we'll totally change the stuff. We'll use D actually. Cool. Uh, now, what have I done? It should be, uh, have I? Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. Is it M A A A M B? So M C C M D M D yeah yeah that's fine. So yeah, does that make sense? Is that how it's it's kind of like passing? So it, it comes from here and that becomes an M A, which is in our scenario M A is maybe int. Let's do that as well. We're really going to town here. So our M A is maybe int. Cool. And then we're going to pass it into a function, which we look at maybe func2, which is this. So there's that. OK. We're going to have to uh, go a bit further. Uh, there we go. <laughs> cool. And then that is going to return us an MB, which is this one. OK. Let's go to there. Cool. Now, so we're at this stage, OK? And now we're going to get. Uh, yes, yeah, so now we're at this stage. Well, actually, this would be done three times. 
So at this stage, we've got a maybe float is what we've been returned. And so on. Um, whoops, 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 whoops. Yeah. And then it'd go into, actually, I'd, it would happen to be a bit bigger, wouldn't it? <laughs> there we go. That's cool. Yeah, maybe float. And then uh, the next function that it's taking, uh, so hold on, it's taking a maybe, oh, maybe int. Yeah, yeah, sorry. So maybe int. And then that returns us a maybe float. And then our maybe float, it doesn't re return. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So then that maybe float um, would take a function. Have I done this the wrong way around? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. I think I've got totally confused. So the first value would be a maybe int, and then the second one would be an int to maybe float. So what we'd get returned from running that into this would be maybe float, and then maybe float. Yeah, so maybe float would go. Yeah, oh, okay, I'm looking at this again, confused. Maybe float, so that'd take a float. Yeah, that's fine. So this is what we expect. Here we go. Sweet, sweet. And then that's what it would return. Let's do a bit of that. Cool. So we can see we start off with a maybe int and then, uh, well, so we, yeah, we start with a maybe int because it's just the result of calling this. But essentially we start with a string and then we work all our way through the two functors or the two binds and then we end up with a maybe int at the end. So that's how it's doing. That's how each function interacts. So it's, it's essentially saying, Give me that. I've got then the result is a maybe int, and then I've got this function which expects an int and returns a maybe float, um, which is that exactly that function. And then it's going, oh well, I'm going to grab the internal value of of this, which is an int, pop it into here, and I'm going to return you that. And then at that point, we're here. We've got okay. Well, now I've got a maybe float. Let's pass it along some more. We go okay. Well, I'm going to take this maybe float. I'm going to take the float value out of maybe, stick it into my function, and that's going to return you a maybe int. And then the end result is maybe int. So you've basically just chained them along. You've gone boom, boom, boom. And that's, you know, so it's like one function into another, into another, into another. Yes, yeah, so you've just literally, rather than every time. And then if any of these happen to be a nothing, so if uh, for some reason here, you return a nothing, then the whole lot just it just stops. It stops there, and then that would return you a nothing. If it stops there, it, you know, so it'd have to go through all three of them, give you results, rather than constantly here. You see how it's like you're checking for a nothing here, you're checking for a nothing there. So, you know, you've got two places where you're going to return nothing, and here uh, it'd do exactly that, basically. It replicates that, so instead of having all this stuff, you can just represent it in that way. Cool. So that's that. Uh, and I think next it will show you. Uh, yeah, I I kind of like it like this, to be honest. But let's keep going. So this looks much cleaner. Let's see why the types work out. OK, well, I kind of went through that, didn't I? Uh, your function will not always combine so cleanly, though. This is where do notations comes into play. We can rewrite the above as. Yeah, the, yep, that's, uh, run maybe func. And it's going to be exactly the same type string to maybe uh, I always do this no why is my keyboard <laughs> do this run maybe funk and okay so equal this is do notation and it's not really that much magic we're just basically a have the ability to split things so we can do this okay and uh, we can, well, what we knew that the output of that was going to be uh, an I. Okay. So I'll explain it in a second. Okay. And then the next one is going to be an F because it's a float. Uh, and that was maybe uh, func2. 
with the I. And then the last one, we'll do maybe funk three with the float. Okay, so what's happening? What is this? Because this is like something we've not seen. Because if we go that way, this is a left bind. So it's basically saying we've got a, a do block. And it, when you've got something in a do block, it changes them along. So it goes this one first, this one, and then it returns us this. Okay, so let's explain this little bit first. So it's saying maybe funk input. Okay. Uh, so we know that the maybe funk input um, I let's have a look actually let's do like that let's do whoops type hole type poles to the rescue except they didn't rescue me <laughs> come on load 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 there's a type hole thank you what are you saying? Duplicate signature for oh 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 no, is it? Run maybe run maybe funks. Oh okay. Uh let's give that like that. Cool. What's happening here? String to maybe int. Uh what is it? Maybe funk one input. Oh yeah, sorry. I need to declare input here, don't I? And then here we go. So it's found a hole. Let's see what we've got available. What the I is. So I is an int. Yep. And F is a float. Okay. So you can see what left bind does. It's like the opposite of pure. It takes uh, what it's wrapped in, which is the maybe monad, and returns us the inner value. Uh, in our case, only if that becomes, only if that's not a nothing, then that returns us an I which uh, maybe func1 is an int, yeah? So it's left binary, it's grabbing a value out. So that'd be an int. And then if this doesn't fail, we've passed that int into maybe func2, uh, which maybe func2 expects an int, okay? And then we do the same again, we grab f, which uh, does it normally, if I do the other thing I can do um, there, does it show me? Sometimes it does. No, it doesn't. Uh, sometimes you can see what F is, but you can see it in, a, in here anyway. And F down there, it said, was a uh, float. Yeah. So F is a float, and then the hold it expects, it wants a float. So you go, oh, okay, well, that's just an F. Cool. So that's totally another way of, um, you know, because like here, I guess you, you're kind of, you're not showing the fact that you have to be more I, uh, I mean which one's nicer i don't know they're kind of different i guess this one you have to sort of guess that you put an input and then the output of that goes as an input into this one uh, so the output of this is an input into this one and the output of that is an input into this one but here you can kind of see uh, the mechanism you know happening uh, right in front of you so you've got maybe funk input and then you take you unbind so you you left bind so you take the maybe out and you just give you a single value and then you do the same here you take it out single the internal value so you take it out of the context and then you do the same again and that gives you exactly the same result so i mean if you compare them you know either that or that is nice but i guess where this becomes a benefit is if you have more functions uh, but i mean i guess you could still rack them up uh, but it, yeah i don't know it depends the flavor so yeah so the left arrow operator is special effectively effectively unwraps the value on the right hand side from the monad this means value i i is type int even though the result of maybe func1 is maybe int the bind operator happens under the hood if the function returns nothing then the entire run maybe uh, funks returns will be nothing so yeah if it fails at any point here then it doesn't matter uh yeah it'll just be it will return you nothing. Cool. Uh, so where are we now? Here we go. So at first glance, this looks more complicated than the bind example. However, it gives us a lot more flexibility. Consider if we wanted to add two more integers before calling maybe func2. Yeah, this is easy. So I guess if you wanted to, that's the example. It's saying, well, I actually want to, you know, give it an extra two before maybe func2, uh, which is easier. If you want to do it inside the bind, uh, you know, when you do a right bind uh, way, you have to right bind. And because this 
it's got to be a function because this is expects the the input to be exactly the same you end up creating a lambda so the lambda is just a function ex accepts uh, expects a value which in this case is an i and then we use that i and do a plus two so much so like you've, this is the i the input that we you know because each one of these are always functions that expects an input but here we have to be like explicit with what we're going to do with that input before we pass it into here so we have to do this lambda uh, to give it the opportunity to to for us to add two to it so yeah and then we can pass it to maybe funk and then well i think like my plants have like just unearthed loads of little flies little midges they've just come alive what's happened <laughs> who knows uh yeah, so the gains are even more obvious if we want to use multiple previous results in a function call. Using binds, we would have to continually accumulate arguments in anonymous functions. One note about do notation, we never use the left uh, bind to unwrap the final operator in a do block. Aha, yeah, yeah, that's a good good point. Here, you can't ever, that can't ever be uh, your, your, you know, whatever you return. And if... For some reason, let's have a look at this. If we want to go like that, okay. Well, the hole is maybe int, okay. So you've got to look. Uh, this is when you might see function like this. So the only int that we've got is the i, for example, okay. So how do we make? So if we go like that. So now, oh, we need. Uh, yes. Yeah, so now we need the. Uh, a ho we found a hole that takes an int and returns us a maybe of list. Oh, okay. So how are we going to do that? Does it give us an option? Yeah. So, uh, well, we want to return this context, which we know to return a context. And we just wrap it in pure, which is not going to work. <laughs> it's not going to work because other oh, it would work if we were to... Like that that'd work there we go it's just because it's wrapped in two uh, sets of functors but it's just one so if we just want to return a maybe int then when we looked at pure uh, which is up here you see pure a which is just an int we're giving it it returns us uh, the context which is maybe because we're in a maybe monad at this point yeah so that's what that's doing but obviously we're doing it slightly different here in that uh, we're returning a list event. Cool. So that's that. Uh, how far have we got to go? Oh, what's the time? Maybe I might have to stop it there, to be honest, I think, because, uh, yeah, because it's getting a bit on. I'm only meant to do two hours. I've done uh, two and a half, maybe more. Four, five, six. Yeah. Wow, I've done loads. Okay, yeah, I might stop. <laughs> Get carried away. Um, cool, so we'll stop here and then we can work on the Eva monad next time, I think. That's probably the, the, the better idea. Uh, I'll pop that in chat in case anyone wants to continue. Uh, or they can just come back. I've kind of just shot myself, haven't I? Yeah, do it in your own time and then don't come back and watch me. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me, to be honest. It, you know, as long as people are are learning more stuff it's cool but we're not too far once we get to even monads uh then what have we got uh we're in part four and then we start doing um well reader and writer so that's cool uh so that's kind of like how we're going to hand some sort of state uh and then the state monad so that's kind of reader and writer combined and then where do we go monad transformers and then that's it and then chapter seven, I can't remember what it is. Oh, and then it just shows us some monad laws. And that's the end of it. So yeah, we've kind of worked, uh, yeah, I think we've worked through quite a good chunk there, haven't we? Sweet. All right, well, thanks for coming. Yeah, cool. I'll catch you then. Uh, I think I'm, yeah, I need to try and sort out my arrangement when I do it. But it's usually the same time. It's like UK time, sort of 4, 5 p.m., or either it's after, so I either do it before dinner or after dinner, basically. So if it's after dinner, it's 7 p.m. 
uh, U, well, UTC it is now, yeah, so uh, it'd be that. Cool, well, thanks for coming, and uh, yeah, see you soon. <laughs>